Hello, people of God. It's good to be with you and to open God's Word once again together. Uh, please turn with me in God's Word to Exodus chapter 39. And we're going to take up our reading at verse 32 and read through the end of the passage. So Exodus 39, beginning at verse 32. And let's pay careful attention, for this is God's own Word. Thus all the work of the tabernacle of the tent of meeting was finished. And the people of Israel did according to all that the Lord had commanded Moses. So they did. Then they brought the tabernacle to Moses, the tent and all its utensils, its hooks, its frames, its bars, its pillars and its bases, the covering of tanned ram skins and goat skins and the veil of the screen, the ark of the testimony with its poles and the mercy seat, the table with all its utensils and the bread of the presence, the lampstand of pure gold and its lamps with the lamp set and all its utensils and the oil for the light, the golden altar, the anointing oil and the fragrant incense, and the screen for the entrance of the tent, the bronze altar and its grating of bronze, its poles and all its utensils, the basin and its stand, the hangings of the court, its pillars and its bases, and the screen for the gate of the court, its cords and its pegs, and all the utensils for the service of the tabernacle for the tent of meeting, the finely worked garments for ministering in the holy place, the holy garments for Aaron the priest, and the garments of his sons for their service as priests, According to all that the Lord had commanded Moses, so the people of Israel had done all the work. And Moses saw all the work, and behold, they had done it. As the Lord had commanded, so had they done it. Then Moses blessed them. Thus far the reading of God's word. May he bless it to us. Uh, We could say that this is really the final inspection of the tabernacle. Uh, that we have here at the end. Uh, Maybe if you've ever been familiar with any kind of construction project, you know that there's always that time in a project where you get to the final inspection, Uh, the final inspection that's made that determines whether or not the project has worked out the way it's supposed to work out um, or whether uh, you need to do more work and more things have to be fixed or uh, more permits have to be issued or more more work has to be completed. Uh, Final inspection, you get the walkthrough and once the inspection is final, the building project is finished. And we could say that this is much like uh, what's happening here. This is the final inspection of the tabernacle. Um, And it has to pass muster, Uh, not with the city or the county. It has to pass muster with the Lord. And that's what Moses is really doing in this passage. He's conducting that final inspection of the tabernacle, all those many parts of it. Uh, the, The tabernacle itself, the furniture that's to go inside, the garments for Aaron, and the high priest to minister. And we want to look at this final inspection and see what we can uh, learn from it as God's people. And the first thing we see in this inspection is a very careful evaluation. Uh, We're told at the beginning of verse 32, thus all the work of the tabernacle of the tent of meeting was finished. Um, And the people of Israel did according to all that the Lord had commanded Moses, so they did. Uh, so all the work is finished. Now they've, they've done everything, um, and now they bring it to Moses for his inspection, right? So that's what happens in verse 33. Then they brought the tabernacle to Moses. So everything is brought by the people who've built it, who've, who've woven it together, all the people who've contributed to the work. Now everything, every part of it is brought to Moses from the inspection, and we see Moses examining it uh, really from the ground up and from the inside out. Uh, so we're, what are we told about first? We're told about the tent. We're told about all of its structure, the, the, the framework for the tent, the basis for the tent, its coverings, its furniture. Uh, so we're going sort of uh, from the ground up, from the inside out, the tent's being looked at. Uh, then the courtyard and its structure and its furniture, uh, verses 39 through 40. And finally, the priestly garments in verse 41. So the tent, its structures, coverings, the furniture, Um, The courtyard, its structure, its furniture, the priestly garments, all of it's being overlooked. No detail of the instructions God has given is overlooked in Moses' inspection. Um, And we should probably pause at this point and say, why is it so important uh, that everything be just right? Um, Is is Moses over micromanaging here? Um, sorry, Moses micromanaging is was too many M's. Um, is is this just you know Moses is a controller and he just has to have his f- thumb and everything? He can't trust any of it to the to the workers. No, I mean the the point of the whole tabernacle has been exactness, right? If we think all the way back to Exodus chapter twenty five nine, what was God's command to Moses? 
in, in chapter 25, verse 9, God commanded Moses, exactly as I show you concerning the pattern of the tabernacle and of all its furniture, so you shall make it. Right? The instructions had required exactness, exactly as I show you concerning the pattern you should make it. So God had shown the pattern to Moses, the covenant mediator. Uh, Moses was in turn charged with making sure it had been made exactly according to the pattern that God had showed him. And this pattern is very important for the purposes of the tabernacle. It's important because this, this pattern, the exactness of the tabernacle, uh, paints a multifaceted picture for God's people. If the tabernacle is not what it's supposed to be, the picture that it's supposed to be for God's people is not going to be there. It must be exactly made because it's a picture of several important things to the people of God. Um, what is what is it telling the people of God? It's telling God's people about a place. The tabernacle is a picture of a place. Uh, the heavens as the dwelling place of God, reminding them that God who dwells in the heavens is also dwelling in the midst of his people. Um, it's God in heaven who provides uh, life and light and food for his people. It's God in heaven who hears the prayers of his people, who's reigning on his throne. The, the tabernacle is a reminder to God's people of that place where God is. Um, so it paints an important picture of that place uh, where light and life and food and prayers ascend and the power of God resides on his throne. It's a, it was an important picture of that place where God dwells in the heavens. Uh, but it was also a picture to God's people that that God was present with his people. Uh, the God who was enthroned in the heavens has made his dwelling place in the midst of his people. Um, it was a reminder of God's presence, that God who dwelt among above the cherubim also dwelt in their presence. Uh, that tent was a, a picture always of God dwelling in the midst of his people. Um, I'm going through my devotional reading, trying to read through the Bible in a year, and I'm in, Deut in uh, Numbers right now. And, you know, the, the way the, the camp is arrayed, the way the people would camp around the tabernacle, it always set the tabernacle in the middle of them, that God was living in the midst of them, that God was traveling with them wherever they went. And wherever they had moved camp and wherever they set up camp, God was there dwelling in their midst. The, the tabernacle was an important picture of that place in heaven where God resides, but also of the presence of God residing amongst his people. And ultimately, the tabernacle is really important because it's a picture of a person. Um, the exactness of that pattern that they were shown of heavenly things was all meant to point forward to the person of our Lord Jesus Christ, right? who comes to the earth to tabernacle among us. Remember, that's the word that John uses when he says the word became flesh and dwelt among us, tabernacled among us, right? So the tabernacle was pointing forward to the person of Jesus Christ, who is God with us, Emmanuel, come to dwell with his people. Uh, he is the God-man, the, the, the God incarnate, son of God incarnate, come into the world to be that link between heaven and earth, a mediator between God and men. Um, who as one who is fully God can speak for God, but who's also fully man can speak for man and mediate between heaven and earth um, and who will return uh, one day in glory to finish the work, to consummate the work that he inaugurated with his death and resurrection uh, to build the kingdom of God, right? He is the one ultimately who will bring earth and heaven together. He is the one who will open the way uh, into the holy of holies, the real holy of holies, in heaven of which the tabernacle was only a copy. And so it's important that it followed the exact pattern, not just because it was a pattern of the heavenly things, not because it reminded us of that place where God is and the presence of God. It ultimately points us forward to the person of our Lord Jesus Christ. And finally, the tabernacle is a picture of the people that God is building. Right, Because as we reminded ourselves, not only is the promise that God tabernacles among us with his son, but that the son who has come into the world to save sinners is also by a, his spirit building us up into a spiritual house. Right, That we are temples of the Holy Spirit. Uh, we are the places where God is making his dwelling 
in us, where he's causing his presence to dwell forever. Um, and so you can see why it was so important that this pattern was followed, because the tabernacle was a multifaceted picture for God's people of what God would do, um, of the place where he was and the pattern, how that cor- how the earthly tabernacle corresponded to the heavenly tabernacle, the heavenly place, how it pictured the dwelling place of God present with his people, how it pointed forward to the person of his son and also pointed to his people and what he would do in them and through them uh, by his spirit, building them up into a holy temple, um, a holy house for him and making them, them, even his people, the dwelling place for his spirit. That's why it's so important that everything be done just as God commanded, that it not be left to human influences and Uh, artistic interpretations and doing what we wanted to do. No, it was a pattern that was to be followed. Um, And the wonderful testimony of this passage, both at the beginning and at the end, is that God's people had done the work exactly as God had commanded. That's where our passage starts with that wonderful reminder in verse 32. That's where the passage ends in verse 42. According to all that the Lord had commanded Moses, so the people of Israel had done all the work. And Moses saw all the work, and behold, they had done it. As the Lord had commanded, so had they done it. Wonderful testimony uh, to their faithfulness. Um, We'll think more about that confirmation that Moses gives that everything has been done and the blessing that he pronounces next time. But what a wonderful thing that God testifies to us here, that the tabernacle was a perfect picture. It was done exactly as he had commanded Uh, to point us to the heavenly realities that are ultimately realized in Christ and in his spirit dwelling with us. Uh, Let's thank God for this passage together. Let's pray. Father, we do thank you for your word, and we thank you that you gave us an exact pattern, a picture that was made exactly as you directed so that it would point uh, point us to those those realities and paint us that multifaceted picture of of where you dwell, the place where you've made your dwelling, uh, the, the presence that you have amongst your people, uh, the person of your son who would one day come as the personification of all that the tabernacle pointed to, and ultimately tells us who we are as a people being built up into a spiritual house, and we ourselves being temples of the Holy Spirit. And so we thank you, Father, that you have given us this picture. We thank you for the faithfulness of your people, that you sustain them by your spirit, that they might make this pattern that still speaks to us today, even though these patterns have been fulfilled in Jesus Christ and these types and shadows have become reality in him. We thank you that we can still look to these pictures and see how they point us to Christ and what he's doing in us. So we thank you for the faithfulness of your people in in the past. We pray that we would be a faithful people who do exactly as you command us, uh, that we would live our give our lives as spiritual sacrifices to you. Um, and offer ourselves as living sacrifices in service of your kingdom, and that we would be careful to um, love you with our heart, soul, mind, and strength, love our neighbors as ourselves, um, and be temples of the Holy Spirit that are worthy of the calling which we have received. Help us in this by your Spirit, we pray, for we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Right, people of God, it's been good to spend this time with you. May the Lord bless you and keep you until we meet again.